Hello and welcome to part two on the uh, Meccano Crawler Tractor. A lot of interest in the first video I made on this uh, particular model so I thought uh, I'd go into a little bit more detail. First of all the plans for the model were available in Constructor Quarterly, December 1988, uh, March 1989 and June 1989. Uh, there's four comprehensive uh, instructions in those three uh, magazines which explain how to build the model but there's not a comprehensive parts list. Uh, I guess in terms of parts, a couple of people have asked in the comments about uh, parts. I guess one of the uh, most difficult things to get enough parts for are the part 103. You do in fact need 66 of these two and a half inch flat girders to complete the model. There are a, a few non Meccano parts in this, uh, this model. You need a large compression spring which will just fit inside that sleeve there to put tension on the tracks. And the modification I've done to this model is the original spindle for the rear uh, drive cog is uh, a Meccano rod which is actually a little bit on the thin side so I've used uh, one of the Meccano larger I mean a quarter inch diameter uh, rods to actually support the rear wheels which, which makes it a little bit more rigid. In these instructions there's quite a lot of detail about construction of the gearbox which is the, uh, the heart of the model. Note in particular the double arm crank which is used to give larger bearing services and also provides a convenient oiling point for some of the gearboxes. That's the double arm crank there. In the first video I didn't show any underside views of the model. This is the underside of the model. These are the brake bands here and here which allow the, the, the model to be steered. I uh, don't know if you can just see here this is the larger size axle which I've put in there for the rear, the rear cog because the original Meccano axles are just a little bit on the thin side and do have quite a lot of uh, flex in them. You may also be able to see there that there's further reduction gearing with inside the hub which actually gives the uh, the model quite a lot of power. The differential is here which is the key to the ability to steer the model. The tow hook on the back is articulated like that and you can see the underside of the gearbox here and I'm not sure if you can just see the double arm crank which is just in there which is used to give better bearing services. I've used in this model a standard Meccano power drive motor which you can't actually see because it's covered up by plates but it drives through this chain here. If I was building the model again from fresh I would probably put a modern motor in. Although this is reasonably quiet the old Meccano power drive motor which I've used they have got a tendency occasionally to slip out of gear or to even strip the gears and if that was the case uh, I would be hard pressed uh, to replace to replace it or to get it to work properly without stripping half the model down. Another pitfall to be wary of uh, where I made a mistake is that this large gear here I used a plastic gear there which so far has worked okay uh, but would be much better as a metal gear which you can also get no problem um, because if that stripped the teeth off the plastic gear 
it would be quite a significant job to uh, to change that. Um, and in fact, that's the reason why I haven't changed it already. Is because um, it, it does work. It just is. It would be better and more reassuring if there was a metal gear in there. Since the previous uh, video that I made, I have done one or two alterations to it. I've, I've now plated the floor. Um, this is so it can be released if you do need to get into the gearbox. Um, you just need to take a couple of nuts off there and you can actually remove the floor in and, and get into the, uh, uh, the works of the thing. I've also had a few problems with uh, some of the yellow plates that faded in the first video. I've replaced or I've turned them over to uh, bring it back to a, a nice yellow shine. Another area I didn't show in the uh, previous video was how the winch mechanism works on the back. This operates the scraper at the front and is a straightforward forward and reverse design which either winds the winch up or releases the winch out. There's a clutch on the side there to allow it to slip if it needs to. And this is controlled from simple linkage from the driver's position here. That's in neutral. Um, I have cheated a little bit with this in that that is driven off a separate low geared motor which is operated from a switch here. So, time I think to see it uh, working again.
like this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.